Dear brothers and sisters, tonight is the last session of our Hajj Reflection series. And tonight our guest speaker is Mahatram Amir, the National President of the Islamic Circle of North America, Dr. Mohsin Mantari. And his topic is Mission of Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam continues. So, inshallah, without further delay, I will invite Dr. Mohsin Mantari. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد my dear brothers, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us that today we are all sitting and attending this session at a time which is probably or definitely the most blessed time of the year. 1443 years back, that was a Friday. Friday between Asr and Maghrib prayer, exactly the time where we stand as of today now. Prophet ﷺ received the last ayahs of Quran according to Hazrat Ibn Abbas, Al Yama Akmal to Lakum, Deenakum, Watmam to Alekum, Nemati. My brothers and sisters, these ayahs which were revealed as the completion of the deen of Allah subhanahu, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us. I'm just starting with few words about the day of Arafah and the time where we are sitting right now. How blessed, how important, how significant, and how useful this time can be for us. When all the hujjaj on the day of Arafah make du'as, and according to the hadith of Prophet وسلم, these are the most blessed times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free people from hellfire more than any other time of the year. This is the time between Asr and Maghrib when our deen was completed. My brothers and sisters, this is the time when we make our commitment to fulfill the mission of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. In last 10 days, you have heard a lot about the life of Hazrat Ibrahim. You have heard a lot about our responsibilities. You have heard a lot about his mission. Now, what is that mission which needs to be continued? And there is so much which we hear and we say and we talk about. The ayah of Quran which says, Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya. My dear brothers and sisters, we hear these ayah times and again. And we talk about that times and again. But I wanted to reflect as the legacy of Prophet Ibrahim on the ayat. There are two things which are very specifically mentioned here. Inna salati wa nusuki. These two things actually are very very important which encompasses the message which I want to convey here today. Our Salat which is the key for which Hazrat Ibrahim attributed and the ayah this is the hukum of Quran to Prophet وسلم, and the ayah which came just before that that Millata Ibrahim Hanifa Mamakana Min Al Mushikin that Hazrat Ibrahim salams way is the right way and then say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen and then say that your salat and your qurbani your sacrifice and your life and death it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
when we talk about the mission of hazrat ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam we talk about his standing for truth his bravery his confidence on allah subhanahu wa taala being a teenager all alone probably the only believer at the time when he was there the only believer on the earth and he stood as a teenager against the tyrants he stood against all the odds he made it clear to everybody that when name al maula wa name al nasir when allah subhanahu wa taala is with me i am going to be successful this is the message which we have to understand today sitting on the day of arafa between asr and maghrib on a friday 1443 years later when our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam conquered the arab and you remember you all remember that that was just when the completion of the deen happened at that time all the companions when they heard the ayah of quran al yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum everybody was delighted everybody was happy but he, hazrat umar felt sad hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu felt sad and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him umar everybody is happy that the deen is completed i have fulfilled my mission and you seem to be sad and what is the reason and the response of that person who was full of wisdom and full of intelligence was o nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam i believe that yes i am happy on one side that the mission is completed but now i feel that since the mission is completed you may not be with us anymore you may leave us very soon and that is what exactly happened exactly after 80 days of revelation of these ayat 80 days after that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam left the world and i am combining this with the mission of hazrat ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam a mission for standing for the truth and justice putting eyes in the eyes against those people who are the tyrants and against the norms of the society my brothers and sisters we live in a society where lots of things have been accepted as the norm of the society and saying th- anything against those norms make you feel alienated make you feel to be criticized but this is the message of hazrat ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam mission continues that whatever it say the whole world say whatever allah subhanahu wa taala and the quran and um, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sunnah say that prevails that is the right message no matter what the whole world says we live in a society when the moral values are completely changed when people think themselves different what they used to think at that time when people think all the immoral activities those lgbt issues those issues in which the world has accepted as a norm the world has attributed this as part of the life and we stand as the following the sunnah of hazrat ibrahim no only that is right what allah subhanahu wa taala has told us right al yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum many people think that addition in the deen after that is a bidah yes that is correct nothing to be added in the deen after that ayah but also remember nothing can be subtracted nothing can be removed from the deen the deen got completed the moral values got completed the social values got completed the family ties be, the family values being completed and allah subhanahu wa taala told us this is the completion of your deen now if people come up with their own ideas of moral norms if they come up with our lifestyles with social norms we should be very careful in accepting those norms because the norms are set by allah subhanahu wa taala and when we talk about the mission of hazrat ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam rabbi ja'alni muqim as-salati wa min zurriyyati rabbana wa taqabbal du'a rabbana fili wa li walidayya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqum al-hisab the most beautiful du'a and these ayats one after the other one after the other tells us the beautiful duas of hazrat ibrahim and those duas encompass around salat iqamat as salat rabbi ja'alni muqim as salati wa min zurriyyati hazrat ibrahim kept on making duas that he himself 
was not the only obedient one. He himself does, would not only the one who will establish the dua, he's making and the salat, he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making supplication that his progeny, his family, he, he, the followers of Hazrat Ibrahim also established the Salat. My brothers and sisters, these are the two important things which I wanted to mention today. One, the Aqamat Salat. That is the mission which needs to be continued. That is the mission that we should not continue alone. We have to have our Zuriyat, our families, the people who follow us. And you know, in Ikna, we have one our own families, which are our blood relatives. But we have this bigger family, larger extended family of Ikna and the workers of Islamic movement and our brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to convey that message uh, that we have to establish the Salat the way Hazrat Ibrahim made the Dua. And then the last thing which I wanted to mention here, the sacrifices Hazrat Ibrahim gave. There are so many things to learn from the life of Hazrat Ibrahim. That mission which he started, he was the first Muhajir. He was the person on first Mahajir on earth. He left his country. He was forced to leave his country because of his deen, because of his Iman, because what he said to everybody. He was removed from uh, Iraq to Palestine, Palestine to Jordan and Jordan to uh, Mecca. He went all over because he was a Mahajir. And the reason he was the Mahajir because he followed, he wanted to follow the laws of which were given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was a rebel against those gods who were prevalent in those days. And that is the message. That is the mission. That we, we wherever we live, whether we live in, in the Western world, whether we live in Eastern world, laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ahkamat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the guidelines of Islam will stay safe. We cannot decide to pick and choose on our deen. We have to follow every single aspect of our deen. He was the first Mahajir, and not only the first Mahajir, he was the one who led the way of showing the whole world what sacrifice means. The word Wanusuki, the, the, the ayah which I just read, in the Salati Wanusuki, everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he proved it with action, with action. And what were, were those actions? He was removed from his country land of his birth just because he was a rebellion of that system. He did not accept anyone else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the God, as the Almighty. And then when we all know about his sacrifices, leaving his newborn son and his wife in an area where there was no water, where there was no food, there was nothing, but he knew he knew that there is somebody who will provide. There is a power whom he trusted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sacrificed his family life. And one thing which I really wanted to point out here. Many of us, when we live in this world, a world with full of bounty, full of nema, full of lavish, uh, 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 lavish things which we have around us. We have houses, nice, cozy beds, beautiful cars, everything which, which attracts a nafs. And we think always about our livelihood. We think about our financial well-being. We think about the education of our children. Now put all this in perspective, how has it been? How much he cared about his life? What was his, what was his career? What was his plan, estate planning, all those plannings which we do in these days? What was he thinking about the education of his children? What was his plan to accumulate some wealth for his children and his family? His sacrifice showed that his career, his life, his livelihood, his planning for his future, his financial planning, his estate planning, everything revolved around the itaat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His career was itaat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His livelihood was obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His family planning was to follow the guidelines given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we see afterwards, the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Hazrat Abu Bakr brought every single thing in his house, every single utensil, every single bank balance, every single thing which he had, 
did how much he cared about his future planning, how much he cared about his livelihood, how much he cared about his career, his financial well-being. The life of these amazing individuals, Hazrat Ibrahim sacrifice, leads the way to tell us that something is much, much more than, much more important than what we think in this dunya. My brothers and sisters, this is the time we all think about that. Today, while we finish the 10th, uh, 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 when we go uh, on Yom Arafah and we make a special du'as and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the time when supplications are accepted, the time when istighfars are accepted, think and evaluate ourselves. How much are we supposed to put for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how much actually we have done? The, the mission of Hazrat Ibrahim, the mission of sacrifice, the mission of establishing the Salat, the mission of giving whatever you have for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much that mission has been accomplished? How much that role model has given that message to us in our life? How much our livelihoods, our future plannings, our family plannings, all those, all those are revolving around the itaat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about the and we talk about that deen was completed, how many of us think that this deen is the whole thing? It's a whole package. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, don't enter the religion, don't enter the religion in bits and pieces and enter the religion with its entirety, with its everything you have, your personal life, your social life, your entertainment life, your family life, your livelihood, your business life, every single thing should go under the banner of, and the guidelines of Islam. And when we live in a society where things are changing, when people are trying to tell us that Allah's disobedience, immoral actions are acceptable, we all have to make sure that we say no to that. And we stand our ground and we make ourselves convinced and we make our families convinced and we make our jama'a convinced that everything which is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the right thing. And with that, inshallah, I will finish making dua that Rabbi Jalni Muqeem as Salati wa min zurriyati Rabbana wa taqabbal dua Rabbana fili wa li walidayya wa li mu'minina yawma yaqum al hisab Allahumma asin aqibatana fil umure kulliha wa jilna min khizi dunya wa zaab al akhra May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who fulfill the mission of Hazrat Ibrahim. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahayaya wa maati lillahi rabbil alami. That our last breath when we take the kalma of la ilaha illallah is on our tongue and we leave this world in a condition when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is razi with us and we are pleased that we are going to meet him. May Allah accept all the efforts from all the Ikna brothers who arrange all these sessions for last 10 days. May Allah accept our du'as. May Allah accept and magnify this on the day of judgment and increase the rewards of everybody who are part of these sessions. Eid Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa Mohsin bhai, bhai. inshallah I, I believe that every one of us who attended these, uh, these 10 sessions these started, started from last day of this hajj and, and now today we're going to end our hajj reflections series from ILF and National Department of Fitna. Inshallah we will have tomorrow Eid Mubarak to all of you, to our National Amir as well, to every one of you and to our family. So be happy so be and happy have the time have so that during this night we can spend some time for Istafar and getting and receiving and the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.